I was born in Kansas, in Johnson County, Kansas, in the late 1930s. That's pre-war. That's when our bread and our milk, in fact, came by horse-drawn cart. Uh, we were on a dirt road. There was a sheep farm up the way, and the nearest farm had the ice man come twice a week. Now, we were a little uh, better off. We had a Cervelle gas refrigerator. Some of you might remember that, but I grew up in a very, very rural community, which means that in point and in fact, I'm still a country girl. Monterey, where I've had the great good fortune to be since 1966, and I just did that math, that's 50 years, Monterey is still a wonderfully rural community. So my early years, to lead me to here to be a realtor for 38 years, an arts supporter, and a teacher. And the teacher is something that probably not too many people know about, but I'm going to tell you. When I grew up out in Kansas, my mother was a semi-professional ballet dancer and modern dancer. In those days, they called it adagio dancing. And I say semi-professional because I think she told me the most money she ever made was $5 a month. But dancers have never made a good family living. But I grew up where George Balanchine, Tanakil Leclerc, and other dancers, the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo, for which we would drive two, three hours to see, they were kind of the gods and goddesses in our household, along with, later on, FDR and Harry Truman. Those are, that's the Midwest. And in the Midwest, my mother being a dancer and an artist, absolutely an artist, and my father was a press photographer. He started out life as an art photographer, photographed the parts of B-29s, during the Great War, and then went on to become the chief press photographer at the Kansas City Star for many years until his passing. I went to the University of Kansas after Shawnee Mission Rural High School. I went to the University of Kansas, and then in 1962, moved to New York City to get a master's degree at NYU not only to get a master's degree, but to continue a child of Kansas coming to New York City at age 24. I stayed at a Times Square hotel, so that's the only place I knew. I hailed a taxi cab out in front and said, take me to Riverside Drive. <laughs> it was the only name of any street I knew. And the taxi driver said, well, where on Riverside Drive? And I said, just drive. I'll let you know when to stop. <laughs> he stopped at 88th and Riverside Drive. And in those days, you found your apartment by a little thing in the window that said, apartment available. Knocked on the door. Half an hour later, I had my first apartment in New York City. And then I started going to everything every concert, every ballet, everything I could possibly see, Broadway. I have a ticket from Broadway, $1.76. <laughs> I have the stub. It was a great, great life. When I finished my master's degree, and while I was going to school, I went to work in the advertising business. Um, I knew that secretarial skills, which frankly, once you've had undergraduate degree and a graduate, you know how to type. I knew how to type. I didn't know shorthand, but I memorized things pretty well. One of my first bosses asked me, said, well, can you take a letter? And I said, sure. Got the pad out. He dictated. I wrote about as fast as I could, went to the typewriter, typed it all up and gave it to him. And he said to me, well, Nancy, this was great, and you did a really good job. But in shorthand, Dear Sir is written like this. <laughs> OK, he gave me the job, and it turned out he was a Columbia University master's in English. 
as I was, and he had a soft spot in his heart for us. Lived on the Upper West Side, then down to the village. And during those years, I met and married my son's father, who was a professor of law at NYU. We moved then to Park Slope in Brooklyn. So we've got the Upper West Side, the village, and Park Slope, which most people tell me the Berkshires is just the Upper West Side with a few more trees. <laughs> So we first summered in Monterey here in 1966, and it's always been in Monterey. When my son's father and I decided very companionably to go our separate ways, I wanted to stay in the Berkshires. This was by then absolutely home. My son had gone to the Monterey kindergarten, and he was a second grader in Mill River when I needed to go on my own to make a family living. And somebody said to me, gee, Nancy, I think you might be good in real estate. That was 1978. So there I was, a single parent of a second grader. And not only was it, as it turned out, was I good at real estate, I just thought it was the most fun that anybody could have, meeting so many fascinating people and putting things together. And that very, very beginning, the very first course that I took as an incoming realtor reminded me very, very clearly of my Midwestern upbringing. And my Midwestern upbringing was very simple. The golden rule is the rule. And that the very best thing you can say about somebody is he or she is nice. And the worst thing you can say is not nice. So when I started my company, I became fascinated by the Realtor Code of Ethics. And it was very, very shortly thereafter, 1982, when my board asked me if I would take over the orientation class for all the new realtors in Berkshire County, and with particular emphasis on the Realtor Code of Ethics and professional standards. So I studied the code. I went to the Mason Library and looked in the card catalog to find out about ethics, because I said, how can one grown-up in a profession purport to stand up in front of a group of other grown-ups to teach ethics? So I went right back to the golden rule. And I said to all of these new realtors, in all of these years, I've taught over 4,000 realtors right here in Berkshire County, I said, you know what? You either got it, probably from mom or dad or grandma or grandma, about that feeling in the pit of your stomach when you're doing right or not. You're going to know it. You're going to know it. You're going to feel it. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, then it is impossible for one grown-up to talk to others. So I started a teaching, first for my local board, for whom I still teach five times a year, all the new realtors coming in. And then the folks in Massachusetts started asking me to come talk to their associations. And then the other New England states started asking me to come. And then the National Association had me come to Chicago and take extra training. And I became the National Professional Standards Forum chairman for two years in the late 80s. And by the early 90s, I was training for the National Association all over the country. Uh, Idaho, New Mexico, Louisiana, Missouri, Nebraska, St. Thomas and St. John, where they couldn't understand that I wore stockings. 
So I did 13 years of travel for the National Association. The last year was 2002, because after 9-11, air travel was just so difficult that it was almost impossible. I would do my real estate Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and on Monday, I would get on an airplane and go to Nevada, New Mexico, California, Montana. I've been in 26 of the state's training. But there came a time when I just said, I've got to focus right here on my business, which I've done. It wasn't very hard to get involved in the first organization that I got involved in, and that was Jacob's Pillow Dance Festival. With my mother's background, and uh, people ask me, were you a dancer? I said, yeah, but not very good. But I am an admirer, I am a fan. So I began in 1987, and in 1990, they asked me to join the board. So last year in 2015, I celebrated 25 years on that particular board. Sharing the arts with everyone is a huge community commitment that I think is really important. So over the years, I've been on the founding boards of, for example, IS-183 Art School of the Berkshires, where our commitment was all abilities, all ages, all incomes. To work with your hands to create, and it becomes a community of creation. The same thing is true of community access to the arts, on whose board I also had the honor to serve. The Berkshire Creative Economy Council, Great Barrington Fairgrounds, and served committee work, Barrington Stage, Berkshire Taconic Community Foundation, The Mount, Berkshire Theater Festival, and always, always, always back to Jacob's pillow. I'm so honored to be one of the participants here today, and there were so many things that the previous speaker said that touched me. The importance of the golden rule, which I see in my realtor life as do unto the buyers, do unto the sellers, and do unto thy fellow realtors. If you do that, that is a service to the community. Desmond Tutu, a great man, said, do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good put together that overwhelm the world. Let's do them. Thank you.